Hi, Dr. Rano and students from Vietnam, from Indonesia. Um, it's my pleasure to give you the very last talk about the employment recruitment, selection, and placement. Uh, begin. Uh, let's begin with these questions. Um, do you think in recruiting is important? Okay, and what does recruiting really mean? Um, um, Basically, in an organization, when a manager is given an OK, OK, approved to fill a position, usually they need to make a request for hiring a new uh, crew. Um, but if they are uh, so depend, uh, the company basically uh, will evaluate, assess the necessity or a budget and everything. And to decide that uh, whether a functional department can have uh, a new hiring. So when the manager is authorized to fill a position, so the next step is to uh, to be able to come out with. So sometimes we call the applicant pool, and the applicant pool refers to a um, whole bunch of. Um, possible candidate you know you you need for this job so this is something um, like what we talk about from the last seminar or class about the job analysis or the uh, job specification or even with the what we call the competence uh, competency okay so uh, employment recruiting is really just to find or try to attract um, a talent um, for this job. So this picture actually shows just how important it is for the recruitment in the organization. Uh, the chart shows the relationship between the quality of talent and the business performance. And this is very dramatic as you can see that um, here is the job complexity. Uh, as the job complexity gets higher and higher, okay, the average performance and the high performance, high performance actually can, they are very productive to the company and company gets quite a bit of benefit out of this. So that's why um, you can see how uh, business are putting more and more efforts in terms of uh, uh, hiring or recruiting all the talent. So what does recruitment mean? Well, recruitment means the overall process is actually a process. Uh, this process includes attracting, shortlisting, selecting, and appointing suitable candidates for the job. So this means also that uh, we are not only just to look for people from outside of the company, but also it can be the people from inside within the organization. And the key is to going through all this process and putting the suitable meaning right person for the uh for for the good job or i would say not good job but for the right job okay so recruiting is important like what we um keep saying and it's a skill okay uh, it's actually a skill and the skill focusing on how you screen out um all the um, unsuitable first person for the particular job and uh, then be able to maintain the best person meaning the right person for the right job okay so you may not be good at one this job but you will probably be good at another job so really recruiting meaning a matching making kind of uh, um, uh, characteristics so effective recruiting is not easy um, we need to use some methods and that this method sometimes are not um, the recruitment issue such as the pay scale it's more like um, uh, uh, you know accounting or even finance kind of issue so you uh, sometimes HR have to end up um, you know to to go and negotiate 
uh, or talk to the other um, department for a possible of a pay raise or you know uh, or pay salary offers and also uh, it related to the employment law that prescribed so it is um, to be able to work on this position you do really need to know some uh, government policy in terms of a labor um, <clears throat> labor ministry so line and staff as you can remember we mentioned that uh, in our first uh, seminar we talk about the line uh, management uh, is actually where the functional uh, department is like uh, for example if you're a production manager and stuff and staff basically means the HR uh, department so both line and staff needs to work together in order to make this recruitment uh, successful so the key point uh, or key principle here is to to get the right person in the right job with the right capability at the right time so it's um, it's interesting how we focusing all on the right so it's the matter of getting you know the right way right place right people and right time and uh, here are some uh, principles the first one is that we need to identify our needs okay within the co um, cooperation is particularly what kind of workforce we need and this business direction as you know it matches with the company strategy right and like uh, for example we do uh, here in Taiwan we do have a lot of uh, enterprises that uh, expand overseas and because of the people talented in Indonesia or Vietnam or even um, anywhere else and I'm pretty sure there are very um, there are many many big company in your country that they are expanding uh, overseas as well and in that case uh, because they want to make more profit or they want the business be be more stable right so in that case they probably need some talents like you guys to have uh, to 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 work for them so if uh, for uh, all of you who have a second language ability and you guys will be most um, attractive candidate that the company wants to hire you in and that to to be relocated you okay they want to be able to relocate you to some other country okay so so that's one thing so we need to identify um, what's our strategic uh, direction development in the future and then therefore what kind of uh, um, talents we need then we analyze and understand the makeup of the current um, workforce the makeup here meaning the composition so we need to really look inside of who are the people that we cur currently work for us okay because sometimes um, it's sometimes the company wants to be able to uh, train or cultivate or educate the um, a lot of time actually the people who are working for them right now because it's just a lot easier they don't have to go through adjustment period okay and you've already worked here so and you know <clears throat> the culture and the work and everything you're very familiar so it actually it's a it's a low cost in terms of a training a new person so they would like to understand or and or they would like to understand the uh, possible current uh, people who they are uh, in their um, in the com company actually and so what they do is they want to do a SWOT analysis and the scan environmental scan and the uh, staff profiling all this we've talked about uh, in our first uh, section okay and the makeup of the current workforce not only within our company but also uh, in terms of the whole country okay so in our 
first talk, we also talk about the demographic kind of thing, like the aging population and so on, so that you will、uh, plan ahead of what you should do、uh, in terms of your company if you wanna get.、Um, If you wanna develop, or if you wanna move on to that direction, should you hire a foreigner, okay? Instead of,、um, you know,、uh, looking for people from your your country because of the agents. Like for example, in Taiwan now, there are some companies that open up to foreign、uh, worker like you guys to come and, you know, and we welcoming you with a talent to come and work for us. Some of them are actually in a high position. It's not necessary,、um, you know, the low position job. Okay, so it's、um, we do have, for example, in the education industry, we are opening for some foreign staff people to come over to、uh, work with us. So、um, it is because of the demographic trends that influence. And number three, we determine the necessary skills, capability, and competency. And this is the、uh, things that we talk about from last so、uh, last session、um, through the job analysis. So we determine on what、uh, they need or what kind of candidates we need, and then we develop a policy, a strategy that will helps us to achieve the goal. So how we screen off, okay, the Or how we select the talent is the policy and strategy、um, that is important in this session that we're going to talk about. So the steps in recruitment and selection process are looking like this. First, we have planning and we forecasting. Forecasting basically means, or planning basically means that how many, what type of people. Where which department need,、uh, needs to hire, and do they hire all in the same like you know, for example, if the、uh, department needs maybe hiring two staff,、um, particularly in the sort of、uh, quality control aspects. So do they hire all to fulfill two staff、um, this year, or should you,、um, you know? Fill in this position in maybe two years in a row, and and so on. So those are like forecasting and planning, and also、um, once we decide, usually we need to come up with、uh, who they are. So this is um, um, quite important, and you will know that as the jobs,、uh, particularly job is getting higher or、uh, higher ranking. Um, usually, it's not so easy to just put on a newspaper job post or any social、um, any social medias as for the job opening. It actually requires you to have some connection and look for the people and within the circle, kind of like that, and the candidates. And here they complete the form. The and these parts are what the candidates. We'll do complete the form and select、um, some. We need to take test. I don't know if you guys tried that.、Um, you know, you will notice that、uh, a lot of time the company taking the test. They're not so much as、uh, you know academic tests. Probably just a little, but most of them are like common sense. Is is like an IQ or EQ kind of tests. Okay, and so. And then you will earn yourself an interview, okay, in front of different type of,、um, you know, um, uh, managers. It can be、um, usually it will be probably the people in the front line first, and then the ranking gets higher. So、uh, here is just some of the description that I just talked about. So to build up a Pool of candidates. Okay, usually we're looking for external or internal sources, and we will talk about it later. Okay, and then, and so on. Okay, so earlier we were saying about just、uh, how many people are planning forecasting, how many、um, that we need, and that we need to come up with a applicant applicant pool, right? So here is just what we call a recruiting yield 
um, pyramid. Okay, this recruiting yield pyramid right here. Okay, you will see the leads generated, meaning a pool or even just the um, out, uh, external or internal kind of um, uh, source that they provided you. So, um, you know, the the ratio will be six to one. Okay, so out of, for example, if you are looking to hire 50, okay, newcomers or crew, um, you, are, you are basically looking at this one to six ratio. That's what that really means. And that for a thousand or 1200 people that come in for the interview or to get the job, you will um, at the second level to screen off, screen out, um, you know, another huge percentage of the people. This is usually done through maybe just the test. Okay. And it is really, uh, I'm, I don't know if you notice, but it is very true in Taiwan. For example, people who want to work for MRT or like a super speed highway, people who want to work on just the entry level. Usually we do have like more than, more than, um, thousand. Sometimes we have, um, more than five or even 10,000. Okay, there, there was one year when they're just starting the first few, like five years or so, it was a very hot job just to be able to work either as a service or uh, later on you can move upward, right? So people are really just pouring, you know, to come and apply for the job. So um, then at the first, you know, trials or the first phase, they will just take in, um, you know, certain course, certain tests. And then they actually even list it out, give it you, um, you know, the, the courses that they are looking for. And one of them is the TOEIC, okay, or the English test. So language to them, obviously, is a very uh, necessary uh, skill. Okay, and then they screen out so the for the second level. So this is a level where you can see that it's almost you know like um, the ratio. Okay, so uh, this recruiting yield ratio are basically a key performance index that we are using to measuring how efficient our uh, hiring process is. So we we're um, measure how many candidates were hired from the total uh, number of the applicant here. And this is basically from the stage one all the way to the top to the final stage. Okay. It's actually the historical um, arithmetic relation. So basically this is just a rule of thumb and that it shows the relationship between the crew and leads at the beginning, lead generated to um, to the you know uh, the invite in candidate invited, and that to the candidate interviewed, and that finally to the candidate that they they make the offer. Okay, and then or the finally the new hires. Okay. So what does sourcing mean? Um, sourcing means the use of one or more strategy to attract or identify the candidates to fill the job. So here is that definition. But what does um, um, you now strategy? Because uh, we are looking at uh, the HR person. Uh, once the company gives an okay, so so you got to find someone to come and apply for it, right? So sometimes it's, um, then then somehow it becomes a job of HR uh, department to try to open up to let everybody know about this job opening. So that's why the sourcing falls actually into the HR's responsibility, not necessarily uh, or actually it's not the line manager or the functional department actually. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> so that's why we have an internal a external recruitment. So the first thing is that we evaluate that jobs uh, characteristics and maybe we want to open up for an internal 
application first and to see if we can find someone who are interested in uh, doing a rotation, you know, changing uh, the job um, in different department, work different jobs and so on. Then we decided on opening up to uh, other to the public. Okay. So the recruitment source and the methods right here, uh, we do have, for example, we say about internal source of candidate. So how can we let our um, uh, employee knows? Okay, it's like if you if you think back to uh, all of you, if you do have some working experience, and if not, if all of you are a full time student, then looking back to um, if you're you, if you ever interested in working in on campus, I mean, in any type of department or administrative um, department, then as a student, how would you know, right? So, and that's and some some position they actually prefer to uh, offer to the students in the university, right? So those ones are more like internal, so the hiring, that's what we said. So the vacancy of the position can be given um, to the campus, okay? And that a lot of time, uh, the department, each department will make the announcement, will put them um, in a website or so on, okay? And what are the recruitment methods? We do have uh, certain these three actually, and among which this one we call promotion. So this is opening up for, remember, this is opening up for the internal, okay, like within the organization. So that's why we, our recruitment methods are these, like a promotion. So, um, and, or we call it rotation. So the promotion and rotation, uh, I don't know if you notice the difference, okay, yeah? Do you think which one is higher? Uh, let's see. If we're looking at um, the direction, one is straight up vertical, the other one is horizontal. Which one you think is more of a horizontal? Well, yeah. Okay, so it's like the rotation here. Okay, basically rotation is more like a transferring the position. So sometimes the position are more or less the same level. Okay, that's what we call rotation. So it will be the same level, but with different, um, different perspective. And promotion will be a different level. Uh, when we say promotion is actually a higher level than what, what or where you are right now. So you say it's a raising level. Then de demotion, a lot of time mm, it's it, demotion happening not, it does happen, but then if it happened, it's not, usually it leads to not a very um, good way of thinking because it's downgrading, right? Meaning if you are a manager, but and you, you probably get transfer or apply for a job that is lower than your level. And sometimes uh, that's why people, it will, it will give people an impression as if something happening, okay? But um, it really depends because uh, for example, like in our education industry uh, here, it's not necessary a a regular policy, but it is a rule of thumb that if you, in order to, for you to become a dean, you need to um, you need to probably uh, be a head of department first, okay, and that in order for you to be even higher than, for example, the the vice president or vice chairman. Yeah you know, the vice uh, chancellor, I'm saying, yeah, you will probably need to be almost all in a, all major, you know, um, administrative department in order to do that. So that in that sense, if you have been in a one higher level, but without the other, usually we will come back to make it up. Okay, so downgrading most of the time sounds that's as if it's something happening that you get the promote, but um, uh, 
it will be sometimes that they will just try to fill in, you know, with all the qualification that you need in order to become a higher level. Okay, so therefore you're temporary to be demotion. Okay, and if you're looking for a candidate outside of the source, then usually you can always get all employee. So what we will do is, for example, okay, we will have a job posting or we will ask our current employees to recommend or we call referral. Okay, and normally this is something that we prefer because our employee knows um, our company better. So they suppose they will recommend uh, more suitable people to come and work for them. And if they are willing to do a referral, actually it also means that they give a recognition to the company as well. So it actually go both way. And the recruitment agency, and this is something we're going to talk about later. So what are type of agency? Well, we do have a government agency and we do have a private agency. And um, so they try to help out on both sides. They try to help people to find a job. At the same time, they also try to help a company to find uh, the right person. So they actually work from both sides for both sides and the uh, educational institute okay so it's like if you guys are in uh, school so you have company that come to your school and and looking for student who probably will join the co-op program or we call intern and uh, and so on and uh, later on we will and also like this is a job center that we talk about okay so um, besides all those, if you're doing the outsourcing, um, there is another way, which is a current way that we're doing is for the social media. Okay, it's through the social media. So it's uh, actually even a more popular way is because you can get the broader, um, broader candidates. And at the same time, through the social media, you can also get some kind of more, we call a fair recommendation from uh, people who may know this person or may not know this person, but by the observation of the you know, social media they are posting. So you can kind of get a more um, more uh, objective view of the person. And here is the um, one of the uh, YouTube that I find is interesting. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys um, have the Facebook or do you guys use Facebook or you guys use Instagram most of the time? Hey, let's uh, watch this very interesting report. We live in an information age and many people post comments and photos daily on social media. If that's you or someone you know, you should know about a new survey. Yes, 60% of employers say they check a person's social media background before hiring and what you post could prevent you from getting a job. Pat Foran has the story on Consumer Alert. The new survey from CareerBuilder found that 60% of employers will not hire someone until they research how they appear on social media sites like Facebook and Twitter. The findings are similar to a recent study by Workopolis, Canada's largest online job board that connects companies and job seekers. Marsha Ford says many people don't realize what they put on the web is often there for everyone to see. You would be surprised at the number of people who don't put the restrictions high on their Facebook profile, allowing almost anybody to see the details of their social media life. Workopolis found 63% of companies check social media before hiring and 48% of companies saw something that caused them not to hire a person. The reasons were posts about excessive drinking or drug use, profanities, racist or sexist comments, suggestive provocative photos and negative comments about previous employers. Once you put something out there, it's very hard to take back and also people forget to take it back. The surveys also found some employers like what they find on social media. It can tip the balance and actually help you get a job. 
Reasons employers did hire someone after checking Facebook and Twitter included posts about community and charitable work, athletic accomplishments, appearing kind and compassionate, and having a professional image. Ford says whether you're looking for a job or not, always think before you post. Be professional today. Be mindful of what you're posting because um, it will have an impact on your career if you don't. And many employers are turned off by a person if they look angry in their profile picture. They're more receptive to someone who appears kind and smiling. So a picture is not just worth a thousand words. It could help you get a job, too. On your side, I'm Pat Foran. Okay, so isn't that this interesting? Um, if you recall, what type of posting that will not welcome or not very helpful to your future, um, you know, job possibilities? Okay, and got to think about uh, taking those out. So here, this is a trendy, uh, trendy uh, way of uh, getting um, to know your future or prospects. Okay, especially if you are interested in hiring the people. Okay, so this is a study on the social media uh, recruitment, as we've uh, earlier watched that uh, watched that news report. And this social media re uh, recruitment is done with the three uh, pros um, perspectives. The first, first one, it talks about the intention. Okay, so the intention here, they refers to the intention of the recruiter to adopt the social media for the employee recruitment. Because um, sometimes it really depends on the people. Okay, and you know, we both... So all we all have this uh, Facebooks and the Twitter and everything. Sometimes we are just scanning through, you know, nothing very particularly looking for, right? But then for those people who are HR or really looking for a person who um, you want to invite and come and offer a job, then the intention will be quite different. So assume that the recruiter's intention is to use the social media can uh, influence their decision. So if they are someone like you guys are very trendy and always believe that social media is a very good uh, way of getting to know your future prospect, then a lot of your decision will depend on what you are looking at, uh, what you have found from the Twitter, from the personal Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. Okay, so that, but then there are some people who does not believe that social media should uh, be one of the reference. Then, you know, they will, they will simply not making their decision based on what they've seen. So the question will be asked, for example, social media should have a central road in the hiring process or social media has been considered important in the industry. So these two type of questions refers to or indicates on the standpoint of view of the HR person, how they perceive the social media's recruitment. And also the recruitment outcome refers to the expected benefit. Expected benefit meaning that uh, if I'm hiring someone from this, you know, tool, this this stage or this way, and what is the benefit or what do I get out of it? Okay, and in terms of organization, of course. Okay, so here they consider the two aspects of the uh, recruitment outcome. The first one is pre-hire outcome and the first and the second one is the post-hire outcome. So basically they're trying to compare the gap between what we have perceived, you know, expected, what we think that we will be getting out and to the final, like if you're really hiring the person through this social media and how this person performed as um, giving a good, you know, expectation fulfilled or it's not the same as what you thought, you thought of. And also the credibility and satisfaction. So this is more, this, this part recruitment outcome is more of the hiring, the people who get hired itself. Is it uh, expected from the social media, how they post themselves to the person who really just face to face or being with, or um, 
you know, that the credibility and satisfaction is more of the uh, recruiter, okay, or the company that they, how they think of the person. Okay, so the recruiter's perceptions, thinking, or evaluation on the capability of the social media's uh, recruitment, um, and so on. Okay, and uh, social media is just one of the tool to get new, um, you know, the whole, uh, a whole bunch of people, a new listing, okay? And agency are another way to do it. And sometimes, uh, it, like I said, as um, job um, ranking, the, the job opening, the rank is getting, it's higher, usually will be uh, more difficult to to get it through the social media or job ad, ads so we sometimes need to ask for help so agency will be as uh, act as a counselor that serve both employer and employee but in this case we are referring to more of the employer side okay so they will help the employer to visit to uh, to to screen off the candidates and but then first thing they need to do is to understand the the company they're hiring them for doing the uh, recruitment process so they will visit the work site and to do uh, to uh, an understanding of what the work environment is this is uh, actually a very responsible way to, uh, it's like a social ad ethics because you're uh, matching you're doing the matching right job matching so you do need to know what your product is and also you will review with the employers uh, the job requirement and even to help them sometimes to help them to write a job description so and uh, what are type of the employment agency well we have a public which you mean operated by the government um, like a federal here, um, I don't know, in your country, there will be by the province, local government, right? And um, also there will be some kind of nonprofit organization that will help out. And uh, also will be some private agency, but usually they will be charged. Okay, and the non-private uh, NGO type of, it's, they usually, it's not that they don't need money, but usually they will prefer you to donate. Okay, and it is a, a friendly gesture anyway. These three uh, aspects are more coming from the private agency. One is called headhunter, the other one is called recruiter, and the other one is called hiring manager. And they are actually different. Here is a shocking number, okay? It says that 52% of the company actually, they find it is difficult for them to get um, a possible candidate to come and screen, to do the screening actually, okay? And uh, even harder to get a right person. So this number is actually uh, increasing as the as the present days with the pandemic right so the future hr actually really needs to um the the biggest challenge will actually needs to where should i find the people to come okay to apply for and uh the because uh the difficulty is not only just the people but a lot of time is the qualification and the background of the employee that's not um uh is not fulfilled for your job that you are opening so what should you do so what kind of characteristics should you really look for okay sometimes the qualification are very specific on certain tasks but the person who seems very suited and uh, may not have that skill yet but do have the char characters so that's why sometimes it's a struggle or decision that you need to make and uh so employees usually try to lower the risk of that and then they look for the outside agency to help them to to be able to hire for the right people okay
Okay, here are the recruiting source. There one that's through the internet. The other one is for the referral, like we said about it. The advantage and disadvantage. Well, would you refer to your friends to any current job you're at, or not even job, but just the school that you're studying? Okay, this is kind of similar. Okay, and like I said, sometimes you are willing, but sometimes you hesitate because, for one, maybe you're not satisfied with the organization you are currently in now, but also sometimes you do carry some responsibility too by referring anybody to come here, right? So and and because、um, you know you're referring the person, if the person does not do too well, then you kind of feel.、Um, You know, partially responsible, but it, it all depends. Okay, and also sometimes,、um, if you're the person looking for a job, where should you look for? Well, internet's one, and a lot of time you will just go directly to the company's website. Okay, and、uh, for the company or recruiting agency, they will just go to the college and look for the people. Okay, so. In our school, we do have some company that approach us and ask us to be、uh, to refer、um, people, students to to go and work for them as a co-op or afterwards when they graduate. Okay, and a lot of time they will、um, they go directly to different faculty because、uh, this is usually the area that、uh, they expect that the student or the candidate will have the basic knowledge or skill for. And therefore,、um, it's easier for them to be to be certain at、uh, the we would say the quality aspect. Okay, so the disadvantage will be that if you're hiring through the college, usually、um, you. It's um it's for the entry level kind of jobs, so um so that's why student who work in the co op program usually will say that oh we're we're only working in a so the online kind of production line or you know first first front line kind of jobs and that's because this is a recruiting process right. So it's normal, but what you should look for if you are in and in, in this program now is look for the the afterward the future potential, okay. And also there is a professional recruiting、uh, organization, and those ones are、um, requiring okay、um, at the more professional level. So usually will be uh, more uh, they are asking for more. Uh, knowledge of the industry, certain、uh, certain knowledge or certain knowledge about the industry, as well. Then we move to the se selection process. Selection meaning screening, okay, screening the applicant. So how do you screen a applicant? If you are in, if you are in HR, what do you think? Or do you put it this way? Do you screen? In your friends, okay, you probably have、uh, in one occasion that,、uh, for example, you're going to a party or you're going to a social event, and you have so many people, and some people come approach you, okay,、um, but who do you decided to stay with and talk to more at the end? Well, this is, again, this is just. One of the very informal selection process that you've just did, and but then sometimes we we are not aware of, right? So the selection process is basically to make sure that the most appropriate candidates are hired, and in、uh, any selection decision, we usually focusing on the two aspects. And this one is we're looking at the selection decision, and the other one we're looking at the job performance later. So, and then we will. This is like a statistical kind of a arrow kind of thing. So, if your selection decision is accepted or rejected, and then while they get hired, how they perform, if they perform successful or unsuccessful, if they get hired. Okay, selection meaning accept, and then they are doing a successful job, and that means your decision is correct. 
but uh, there are two unfortunate events okay that you HR will be making a wrong uh, bad mistakes is that if you reject the people who can be successful okay right here then you are making a rejection error and sometimes uh, rejection error is something that most of the company wants to rather do I would say okay well it really depends but then it's because uh, pr at present most of especially in uh, in Taiwan I'm not sure in Indonesia or Vietnam um, or any other Asian country that they do have some kind of policy for the worker laborers but here is that that's that's why it makes most of the company that they rather make this mistakes than this one because can you imagine that you're accepting the wrong person who cannot perform successfully or who even bring troubles okay in order to fire a person okay it, it you must go through a lot of procedure okay so that's why okay so here are some of the tool for example first one while you're doing a, a tool for the selection so you some people are looking for through the application meaning that you will provide your own resumes and um, this is this is one note I would like to talk about is that uh, here in Taiwan there are a lot of um, new forces like fresh out of school student who are looking for a job they're just using the application form provided by a, you know a sort of government agency or through some kind of uh, big like a job search kind of a platform kind of thing so they just fill in and that's it I I would say that that's a bad choice okay because there's it's can you imagine everybody has the same resume styles okay so it will be a better way okay or job searching is another job itself so it will be better way that you provide your own specialized okay your own unique resume and style stating uh, what you really accomplished okay so this is one thing and also um, there are some company that um, will perform a written test Okay, and some of the tests will be, or most of the tests will be focusing on their IQ, aptitude, ability, personality, etc. Okay, and then, um, then they will depend on the in industry, right? I think in the medical industry, they actually will do a simulation tests, meaning they will simulate in certain situation uh, or you know that happen, and then they will see how you respond. Okay, so it's actually using a job behavior things. And then finally, they will have an interview. And um, and this is something that physical examination will usually done when they inform you that you are hired. And then uh, the background investigation are done secretively, usually behind the back. Um, not normally informed but then there is one that they were opened up for the reference so whatever the reference you provided them is very important okay and uh, they some company they do check your reference even I know that in North America when I, when I lived there and um, you know how when we we're as a, if we're studying um, you know out outside abroad and sometimes we need to rent right do a rent rent a house and so on so the um, the landlord usually will ask us for the reference and they do really do a reference check okay so even that here we talk about validity and reliability right here validity means that when we're looking at our selection tool or methods uh, is it valid okay meaning that it is valid in terms of uh, getting uh, the right person when we're screaming out the the people the applicants based on a good measurement okay or good sort of criteria is a valid and also reliable meaning a reliability reliable selection tool meaning that can we consistently okay getting the same quality of talent that coming 
Okay, so when we're setting up this um, selection device or tool or ways, whatever you can think of, okay, we need to consider these two. One is that getting, um, does your requirement or, you know, is for, it's matching up with the job that you need, okay? And also, um, can you consistently, repeatedly getting the same trades of people coming in? So those are the two perspectives that we are looking at when we are evaluating the successful or performance of our selection. Yeah. Well, take a guess, these pictures. What do you think this picture is? It's a movie. Do you know the movie? It's called Moneyball. And I don't know if you guys watch this, but I've watched this several times because the HBO keep on playing. But every time when I have a chance, I watched it again. I always amaze how they are trying to do the uh, talent scouting. Okay, scout, that's what we said. And uh, Brad Pitt, obviously, are not the people who scout but he is a general manager for the athletic. And general manager meaning that he is responsible to, to train the players. So not only train the player, but then he needs to try to get the right talents to come into the teams and play. Okay, let's watch this for a very short, probably just two minutes of this movie clip. What's up? Mm. Wade's on too. Ed? Hello? Ed, it's Billy. Billy? What's up? Look, I need a little help on defense. Okay. I'm willing to trade Jeremy John before. Really? What? Mm-hmm. Who you got? Well, let me think. What are you doing? Cleaning house. Maybe? Maybe what? No. Maybe. Hold on. No. Why not? Because you can't trade Jeremy Jambi. He'll be fine, Ed. Now, where do I get the feeling you're picking my pocket? I'm not picking your pocket, you're picking mine. Jambi's name alone is worth more than What's that. What's wrong with him, Billy? There's nothing wrong with him. Now, can we say it's done in theory and start drawing up the paperwork? Okay. Great. But you're gonna have to... I think he was gonna say something else. You get the answer you're looking for. Hang up. So we just want, um, after this uh, video, um, you kind of know, okay, let me just, let me just explain uh, briefly about what uh, the video was going on. It was uh, trading of um, the players um, for the athletic uh, team. Okay, so basically, uh, the character that Brad Pitt play was um, the GM, the athletic GM, Billy, Billy Beings. So he, when he uh, is actually this guy right here. Okay, so when he was just um, uh, ex basically, what happened was that when he just got uh, this job um, for the athletic team, the Major League Baseball. Um, he was under the pressure that he needs to, um, you know, he has a only limited budget and to to run this uh, team, like uh, the baseball team. So he needs to trade some of the superstar at the time, like Jason Giambi. So you heard the, um, in a video, in a movie that is saying about trading off the Giambi and also Johnny Demon and so on. So what this uh, story is really all about is that they use a statistical analysis on the, st on the players. And the, the guy that doing the statistical analysis is actually this guy. His name is called Peter Brandt. So he was looking at some of the uh, key, or we call the index. Okay, for the performance index, for example, like betting average or on base uh, percentage or strike out and so on. Okay, the, he was actually looking at all this recorded by all those players and then figured out who will be a potential one. So the player at that time in the athletic team, 
Okay, it was most of them are,、uh, you know, the famous ones had been traded off and left with some of we call unwanted ones. But then at the end,、uh, the last, you know, at the end of this movie, which was actually based on the true story, that the athletic, okay, this is the their logo,、um, had a final, you know, overall performance that compete against the New York Yankees. And they are actually,、uh, they won at the both、uh, the same number of games, like about a hundred thirty games. But then,、um, if you recall, Yankee is a very famous、uh, baseball team, right? And but their cost of maintaining all those baseball player was like five times more than the athlete. Okay, so if you're looking at the investment kind of things, I think.、Um, Um, Billy Beans really help the team athlete save a lot of money, but、uh, at the same time maintain a very very good performance. So they eventually the athlete at that year,、uh, year two thousand and two, they、uh, made it into the finals. Okay, well、um, that was just about baseball team. So if you're not interested, the About baseball, or you don't know anything about baseball. What I was trying to say, the whole story,、uh, the whole、uh, story in the sports industry is that even the sports industry, they start looking or using the AI for doing the recruiting, recruiting, okay, or scout we call selection, okay. So they're trying to find the top talent. Okay, and that the top talents here is no longer just a recruiter's job, but they are the recruiter are borrowing the ability or you know the characteristic of AI to help them to be able to intelligently,、um, you know, automate or help out with their workflow, meaning the recruiter's workflow. So what should the recruiter do?、Uh, well, recruiter are doing, for example, they need to review. View many many type of、uh, resume that sent to the company, okay, and so on. So here,、um, what AI do in terms of a recruiting process, the the role of AI, and as we know that、uh, in AI, there they do have one of the function, the application of this AI is to、uh, help out using the machine learning, one of the methods. To、uh, shortlist, okay, some of our ideal candidate. So the by using the、uh, um, machine learning in some way, we categorize, okay, we group. Okay, of course, we will give, you know, certain、um, information. Okay, we can have a group of we we're putting all this candidate into groups, different groups, and then we give them, or even we are able to give them a rating. Okay, the rating, the rating. Okay, and then we will list it out、uh, who will be the potential candidates, and and all this okay are based on the a、uh, machine learning mechanism, and we also automate. So overall, in the in the old time, it used to be that we need to go through what I'm calling about giving the rating, or even grouping. Manually, but now the AI with the AI or the machine learning, we can just use,、uh, you know, the some of the skill like natural process language, or we call or we call text mining sometimes. Okay, text mining ways to pick out, you know, if we're sending the resume, we'll pick out those words and then try to characterize, give them a rating, and then group them. Okay, so the benefit of using the AI for the recruiter is first, okay, the recruiter has can, you know, they don't need to do this kind of screening, basic screening job anymore. So they can、uh, reduce their overall time to spend on repetitive or time-consuming tasks, and focus more on、uh, who and how setting,、uh, you know, finding the quality, the characteristic. Of a person, 
Okay, and that all those things, time-consuming or repetitive work, for example, looking over the resumes, okay, and picking out、uh, some of the key traits and giving them a rating and etc. Those ones, they are doing auto automation, so they automat、uh, automatically screen the resume and even trigger the assessment. Okay, and、um, even like、um, I myself doing some of the scheduling. So now here is the scheduling comes. Okay, so the、uh, machine learning here or AI can actually help out to schedule to book. Okay, sending the email to the potential candidates and then setting up. So ask the candidate to book. Okay, in the time slot that they are able to do the interview. So all this traditionally are done by the recruiter, and now the the recruiter、um, is no longer; they are no longer to be responsible of that. So,、um, but then at the same time, the AI can improve the quality of hiring. Okay, and that they standardize job matching. Okay, between the experience, knowledge, skill. Okay, of that. So the AI will try to match them. Uh, based on what we or recruiter, okay, focusing on, we're trying to set some criteria. What do we think of what kind of experience of that, and we setting the standards and knowledge that we need and skill that we need.、Uh, we are looking for in terms of our employees, and then we are setting all the, you know, the rule or the ranking,、um, how,、uh, you know, and do that, all that. And then let the AI do the job of、uh, screening. Okay, so AI shall help recruiter in these area, like、uh, even the sourcing. Okay, they can go on,、um, you know, all the social medias or any website or anything, sending out letters, invitation letter and stuff, and pre-selection during the interview. This is what's going on right now. Even、um, oh, sorry, this one that we are using AI to、uh, try to help students to train for the interview. But then some of the company now are using AI to,、uh, for example, if this is a face and this is eyes, so they are and nose and the mouse. Okay, so the AI will basically spot. Okay. Some of the、uh, key features, okay. For example, the your smile, and then or your、uh, eyes, okay. And to see、um, if while during the interview, are you comfortable? Are you confident? And so on. Okay. And then the finally, the interview runs for selection. Okay, these are what I was just telling you guys about the AI implication. Implication.、Um, basically, if you are ready and excited about all these op、uh, application,、um, these ones are the build main building blocks for using the AI. For example, natural language processing, machine learning, like we mentioned, the two of them, and semantic,、uh, meaning the autologies. And a pattern, like we we're talking about the facial, okay, things, and then finally the scheduling and planning. So see, these ones are、uh, very, very、uh, important key or feature or trends in、uh, our、um, HR industry now. Okay, so what are the challenges when we do? Consider applying AI in our recruiting process. Well, challenge one here says that okay, basically, in order for AI to be able to really screen or really like you know evaluate or recommend, we do need a lot of data. Okay, by that means we probably need millions, ten millions, or hundreds of millions of the data, and the, some of the data characteristics are pictures, right? So it really time consuming and takes a lot of、uh, computational、uh, abilities in a machine. Okay, and to so that they can accurately. 
okay, because we do have some cases report that um, they are having some, um, you know, injustice still or mistakes. So, and also challenge too is that because of that, there are still some people that are concerned about so-called bias, okay, and that um, because uh, remember all the criteria are setting up by still uh, our recruiter like human being so we can actually um, set out certain traits that we like okay unconsciously and also because of um, AI that when they're trying to do the computing some of them are some of the um, algorithm that when they run they are automatically going by selecting the best and and the best or the betters so that unconsciously they will go into a so-called bias or just a local you know we call it local optima kind of things okay and um so uh um, but anyway but still ai is trying to find some patterns okay um, in, in that sense and the challenge number three will be that a lot of um, still a lot of recruiting uh, leaders or we call recruiters still st- skeptical about it okay that um, do they really make the job easier or they are just causing more you know more efforts to to be able to use AI so they during this I think this is just a transitional process where we try to enhance the ability okay of the AI um, but that we you know the machine still needs to borrowing some of the expertise from human right in this slides we're looking at all those famous well-known international company like Amazon Apple Facebook Google and Microsoft you know um, the how their interviewing process goes and how people think about their interview process so this is a method done in one of the study and the data actually comes from 6,463 employees at um, all this you know five famous international companies and uh, they're trying to ask the interviewer to recall the time when they're getting their uh, in, you know interview at the Amazon Apple Facebook and so on so the questions were answered in yes or no and they are all multiple choice this survey is actually done about three years ago and uh, it lasts uh, probably actually two three months so the first question they are asking is how people rate the interview process overall so guess what so within all this five company um, overall people were giving a, a, a you know preference um, and you can see that Apple and Microsoft giving the highest of that and uh, highest ranking and Facebook's actually um, give, being given a lowest ranking and also um, when they ask the interviewer about interviewer about the uh, overall the interview difficulty here um, guess what who has the highest well you can see that Amazon and Microsoft they have in terms of a very difficult okay they are actually the uh, highest especially the Google okay and that the difficult one the very difficult very high difficult one they are really high as well okay and Microsoft they're difficult Okay, so overall, you can see if you put these two together, okay, this is about 48. And this is, Amazon is actually not bad, not bad, it's only, you know, 41. So the overall, we can see that, um, you know, Facebook, probably 42 right here. Okay, so the highest one is Google. And uh, in fact, if you... Uh, type out Google interview you can see some of the interview samples okay in uh, YouTube and some of them are really uh, looks like a very casual kind of question scenario and then they are asking you uh, how you will respond 
Okay, so uh, the employee at Amazon actually uh, gave them a rates pretty much, you know, an easy score right here. So they think it's uh, quite easy. They had highest scores. Okay, like Google, there's actually two extremes, right? And uh, if they're rating by the, you know, department or experience level and tenure, for example, who are already work in that in those company already so they found that uh, with the tenure that is two to five years old uh years not years old uh with the tenure that is uh two to five years um it actually gives the highest uh rating okay and uh, apple uh the who rank the process the highest will be the sales department and for that, uh, who will be the lowest one is actually by different, uh, you know, departments. So the lowest one will be um, the ethnic group. Okay, all those I've, um, different company. So with the Facebook here, okay, who will rank the interview process the highest, we can see that the highest one still will be like working for this company two to five years and that for the Google when they are asking who ranked the interview process the highest they are the one that's working in the marketing department okay but the lowest one will be uh, the tenure that is less than a year and that the uh, operating operation department give the lowest okay and for the Mac Microsoft, for example, uh, it will be again, usually will be the entry level or newly in this company. They usually give the highest. And that was the department wise. Uh, you can see that again, uh, ethnic uh, will be ranking the lowest. So what does this mean? So this actually means that there exists some of the racial imbalance, I would say among this company. So if you're going back to looking at Apple, for example, I remember, okay, um, Apple. So the Apple was actually the lowest and the, the highest was actually the uh, tenure that over 10 years, right? So the ethnic groups in the Apple are actually not so bad in compare with probably uh, what we call Microsoft right there. Okay, when it comes to what most popular way of getting an interview here, uh, we are comparing these to Amazon and Google. We find that the most popular way for Amazon will be actually online. While for Google, it's actually the recruiters. So they are relying on some of their recruiters, uh, either the external or internal recruiter, recruiter to find their uh, suitable uh, candidates here and uh, and the Facebook actually have the highest rate of people who are applying through the uh, the internet or networking okay so you can look at uh, the Facebook right here is actually among all of them there the he the Facebook has the highest and the Microsoft again is still through the recruiter and Apple here is by referral. So you can see that within Amazon, Google, okay, Apple. Okay. So, um, I would say that Google and Microsoft, they're similar. They are looking for their candidates through the recruiter while Microsoft also looking for their new uh, you know, crew through the referral. So all of them, uh, all this famous um, company, you can see that they're actually about 25, around 25% 25 of the rates through the referral. Even, uh, well, Google is a little bit lower, but all these three are very similar. And the average response time after the last uh, interview here, uh, we are comparing with Amazon and Google, and we find that the response time for uh, Google is actually slower. So, and but then Amazon is actually within a week, 
So it's very efficient here. So a significant portion of the people at Google. And、uh, if we're looking at how about others like Facebook, Facebook, and or Apple or the Microsoft, and you can see App,、uh, Microsoft are very efficient. You almost at the same date that you will get a response. While、um, normally I would say it's all within a week time. Okay, so I would say that Google because it's、uh, pretty famous.、Uh, Really famous company, so they their response time are actually、uh, the longest. Okay, very interesting, right? Okay. So the, the average number of interview. Okay, so basically, and、uh, if you're trying to get into all these five top companies, you're not gonna interview just once. Use, you, you know, the average. So what's the average of that? Uh, you're looking at all、uh, these five. The average, who is the highest, will be,、uh, I would say, Google. Okay, five or more, which is true because I do know,、um, you know, someone who was trying to get into Google, and、um, he、uh, got an interview for many, many times. At the end, I think it was the salary, the compensation pay that it didn't go through well, so that he. End up working in Rakuten instead of、uh, Google, and Microsoft again five or more, right? So Facebook even. So it's only Amazon that's probably the highest one will be almost percentage will be about two interviews, and then they will hire. The, then you will know, okay, if you get a job or not. Okay. So did the interview process give you a good sign of a culture at the company? So this is a question asked for those people who are already work in this these five company. So the answer、uh, you can look at it is that about eighty five percent of the employee at the Facebook here, okay, they say that their Process interviewing process was representative of cultural, so which means that when they went to their interview and they already have a good idea about what the、uh, the culture company culture will be look at. So it, Facebook has the highest, and with the lowest one will be Apple. Okay, that they not sure about the company's culture, probably only by hearing or from the media's and so on, or friends who work there probably. And Google actually have not bad. Google has a pre the second highest as well. Okay. And、uh, well, we're almost toward the end. But then before that,、um, how to deliver? Have you ever wondered how to deliver an effective interview? And if you really do get a chance of interview, okay. Here is again.、Uh, I don't know if you've watched this、uh, movie. It's called、um, Pursuit of Happiness. Okay. In this movie,、um, the character here, okay, he was trying to get a job for the very first time, and that he was、uh, um, able to、um, persuade. The people who are in a high rank to hire him for the sake. So let's just watch this very quickly. It's a very touching movie. I'm okay. Okay, he is actually trying to、uh, go to the interview, and he is definitely very late, right? Mr. Gar. 
Okay, you can see that he's very nervous about getting an interview. And if you notice that people who work there, what they're wearing and what he's wearing. Okay, what he did was he was shaking hand to training, all the people there. Come up with a story that would explain my being here dressed like this. And, and I wanted to come up with a story that would demonstrate qualities that I'm sure you all admire here, like, like earnestness or diligence or team playing to something. And I couldn't think of anything. So the truth is, I was arrested for failure to pay parking tickets. Parking tickets? <laughs> and, and I ran all the way here from the, the Polk station, the police station. What were you doing before you were arrested? I was uh, painting my apartment. Is it dry now? <laughs> I hope so. Jay says you're pretty determined. Oh, he's been waiting outside the front of the building with some 40-pound gizmo for over a month. He said you're smart. I like to think so. And you want to learn this business? Yes, sir, I want to learn this business. Have you already started learning on your own? Absolutely. Jay. Yes, sir. How many times have you seen Chris? You know, I don't know. One too many, apparently. Is he ever dressed like this? No. No. Jacket and tie. First in your class? In school? High school? Yes, sir. How many in the class? Uh, Twelve. It was a small town. <laughs> I'll say. But I was also first in my radar class in, in the Navy, and that was a class of 20. Can I say something? Um, I'm the type of person, if you ask me a question and I don't know the answer, I'm going to tell you that I don't know. But I bet you what? I know how to find the answer, and I will find the answer. Is that fair enough? Chris, what would you say if a guy walked in for an interview without a shirt on? And I hired him. What would you say? He must have had on some really nice pants. <laughs> okay, uh, for the time being, Chris. I will just cut here. I don't know how you did it, Justin. Okay. okay, so here, this is a very uh, touching movie, but in the story here, um, I think I've uh, found a lot the the words, the sentence that he uh, presented during the interview, how he persuade the boss of hiring hiring him, and I think it's very uh, encouraging. That um, I think also indicated the quality that a lot of time when we are trying to get our new job or get opportunity to work for. Our dreams that we want and this is the attitude that we should have it says that uh, it's okay that we don't know a lot of questions um, but it's even better if we can um, be honest about it and at the end we will try to find or this is our duty to try to find the answer for the problem that we couldn't answer okay so um, and I think that's what a very um, successful interview. After that, he definitely get hired. So he's actually wearing a shirt and tight now. Okay, now, very important here is that before you go to the interview, 
okay, of course this is a Hollywood movie, but then it, during the if you really go to an interview, you do need to do a preparation. For example, you should do a background check, and you should、uh, follow it,、uh, some of the company's instruction properly. And you should actually have a structural presentation. If you remember what the movies here, even though、uh, it sounds like it's just starting from nowhere, but then if you hear or if you're interested to watch it again, okay, it's very、uh, structural type of uh, uh, content that he presents, and also he highlighted himself a very.、Um, Good characteristic trait and end up with an impact. Okay, with this two、uh, sentence that he said. Okay, well, thank you so much and for today's、uh, seminar. And today's seminar we focuses on how AI has been implicated in recruiting process and help out all the recruiter and how recruiter. Will go through some of the traditional way and、uh, also some of untraditional way, meaning social medias and others to find their talented people. And also, we talk about what are some internal sources and outsources. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoy all these three、uh, series of the lecture. And if should you have any questions,、um, you can email me. Okay. And or. Or I will keep in touch with you guys, and please take care. And once again, I'm really sorry that I couldn't make it in person because I do have a very important personal meeting、um, to go, and so I must、um, using the pre-recording instead. Thank you, and take care, everybody. God bless you.